I got to tell you something, man. Mm. I am genuinely, genuinely debating changing the name of the podcast. <laughs> what do you, to what? Do you have a new idea? <laughs> Welcome back to the Damaged Men podcast. I just think the, some things they start out ironic. Yes. And then they just feel right. I <laughs> Maybe for season two. <laughs> I'm like in full support. I'm going to be honest. I feel it. It's something that resonates with me. And honestly, if I were to say, am I a killer or am I a damaged man? <laughs> we Sometimes we try to tell ourselves, I am a killer. <laughs> but, but what we are is just sad, damaged men. <laughs> yes. Dude, should we do it? Should we change the name? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Fuck it. Why not? Who cares? <laughs> Have we, we haven't like built a brand around this quite yet. No, it's also just it's a catchier. It's a catchier thing. It's, it's definitely, I feel like it's more eye-catching. You know, and the thing is, we'll have to redo the intro. We can just change out the text, right? Yes, but I'm thinking just a lot of B-roll of us crying. <laughs> you know, just really cinematic crying. And then now we can finally do what we've always wanted to do on the podcast, which is just say, why did you leave me? Like to the camera a bunch of times, you know? That's what I'm thinking. Roll that intro, dog. What it do, what it does, be you being where you was, but it ain't what it is. Facing the mud, I really be hating in the mud, said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know goon put too much bass in the sub, cup full of blood, and I gave it a chug. Wait till your neighbors get all snug, then play this real loud where you live. The new intro! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Did we do it in time? Did we work on the, is the intro changed, guys, or did I get lazy? I don't know yet. I think... There's a new intro. Okay, good. <laughs> That's up to the future versions of us. Before we get going, this episode is sponsored by Artlist. Mm. Artlist is a music library, although they also have a second section that is a stock footage catalog. Music with the main Captain Sinbad videos, which I now am inspired to go back in on, go harder on. It really is such an important way of elevating your pieces. Yes. One of my favorite creators who combines amazing visuals with just the right song. And sometimes he, ch he changes songs within like 15 seconds of starting a song. He'll move on to the next one. And also amazing like After Effects graphic cards, although we're rivaling him pretty solidly thanks to you, um, <laughs> um, is Nathaniel Drew. I think his choice of music is incredible. And I have often, you know, struggled to elevate my main videos. Yeah, I, he's kind of like the barometer that I look at. I'm like, oh, I want to get to that level. Yeah. And in recent months, music has made a huge difference in that regard. And a big part of that has been Artlist, which is one of the music libraries I use. They're absolutely fantastic. They have a very affordable plan for music library, copyrighted, cleared music from actual artists. It's not like the generic YouTube music libraries where it's like, tick, tick, is like the YouTube library is often very like, I don't know. It sounds like very bland, generic elevator music. Mm -hmm. In contrast, Artlist sounds really like an actual artist, someone who's actually connected to the music they make. And also one of my favorite parts about Artlist is like the curation mm -hmm. because they have these constantly updating playlists that come out. Like they have a 007 playlist mm. and they right when Batman came out, they made a Batman playlist and it's just songs that sound like these films. And for people like us who have, you know, consistently made videos that are inspired by the likes of James Bond and Batman, mm -hmm. very easy to just dip into those and find like a great James Bond sounding track. And so their playlists just are the best in the game. They have a commercial plan, which for anyone who's a professional videographer, honestly, if you're trying to get your career going, videography is becoming more important than ever, which is cool. Like we're in the right industry. Mm -hmm. So if you have commercial needs for client work, they have a plan that covers that very affordable. They also have a personal plan. So maybe you're trying to start or grow your own YouTube channel. It would be perfect for that. Super affordable, full of value. If you use my link in the description box, you'll get a great deal on Artless plans. I couldn't recommend them enough. One of my favorite brands to be working with that I've been using for I want to say a year and a half now before they even sponsored me like I've been using Artlist and when you get the Artlist membership and let's say you stop using it or mm -hmm. cancel your membership you have the licenses to those songs for life like they're copyright cleared for life and I don't think any other music service no does that's that. not true for I'm, I won't say their names but that's not true for the other the big, other guys the big library companies like I have canceled a different brand for Musafir Sinbad, my second channel or my mm. Hindi channel that I never upload to. 
And as soon, I noticed as soon as I got rid of that subscription, all my videos got demonetized. If I wanted to stay monetized on the channel, I would have had to keep that company subscription, which is kind of, I don't know, it doesn't seem fair. No. And Artlist doesn't do that. They're, you know, I think that's much more ethical. <laughs> so a big thank you to Artlist for sponsoring this video. Before continuing, I will also want to give a quick pitch to Thomas and my Instagrams. I'm now starting to experiment more with reels, trying to like create posts that are more valuable for the viewers. So my Instagram is nrajapande. You can find me there. If you want to send me a DM, I don't get a chance to reply to everyone, but I do try to heart everyone. Um, and sometimes people have sent me some really moving DMs about how this podcast inspired them to go on a three hour hike every Sunday or, or something mm. like that. So it, it makes me it makes me motivated to be better with my week when I know that the viewers who tune in are compatriots in this endeavor of bettering our lives. They care and we're kind of like got this tribe together that's trying to like make something of ourselves. So I'm in Raja Pande. At Mammoth in Space on Instagram and I am not posting to help you in any way, but if you DM me I will reply, probably something nice, or I'll just give you a heart. There you go. With that being said, let's get on with the episode. This episode is all about how to get unstuck in life. Kind of a funky topic because we've been focusing so much on specifically red pill topics, triggering red pill topics to some degree. I'm not sure why I became curious about the subject, but right off the bat, what do you think is a gauge for how stuck or unstuck in life you are? Like what is a good barometer to measure like how things are going? You know, I think if I'm just like feel myself consistently like in doubt or unhappy or anxious about something about my position in life and I don't think it has anything to do with like how successful I am like relative to my age or life standing you know because I've been at like various levels of success and felt stuck right I, I felt stuck when I was like broke and had no money and I've kind of feel stuck recently and I feel like everything's going well when I analyze it so I feel like it's a very mental thing. It's a very you personal thing. Like how happy are you with your current situation? And I think this feeling of being stuck is just like you're receiving signals like you should do something to change what's going on because you're clearly like not fully happy with this. What do you think? One of the reasons that I liked drinking alcohol so much is that the dopamine hit that it would instantly come. And for me, the sweet spot was like a two beers, two pints. It was like... I get so caught up in the images in my head and the sense of optimism I ho and hope I get from my ability to fantasize a future I can believe in. And that feeling is enough for me to feel unstuck. And often alcohol would help me create that fantasy of like, oh, one day I'm going to be a famous director. One day I'm going to like be able to direct a Marvel movie or something like that, you know, like a big blockbuster. And I think the more... Because I am like you. I don't know why. Maybe it's been about a month now where I feel kind of stuck. And I'm like, that's so weird because I it go it comes and goes so fast. That's the problem with like really taking your life seriously and scrutinizing it is like one, one day you can feel like, oh, things are going great. And then if you feel yourself stagnating, if you're hyper aware of your stagnation, it just makes you sad. And one thing that alcohol helped me do is like not notice myself stagnating mm -hmm. and for me stagnation or progress it really is about my comparison to my potential so i like on any given day you'll probably accept this about me for since the start of this year i am much less stagnated like i show i, I mean i show up to work much more often mm -hmm. which is to say like last year you would come over but i wouldn't have stuff ready for us or i wouldn't be at my best to be able to perform that day it's rare that I get days like that outright. Yeah. But I, I think I hold myself to a higher standard now and that higher standard has become my baseline. So I feel this feeling of like, oh, it's, it's a tremendous sorrow, honestly. Maybe it's, for me, it's partially because the views on the main videos have been so up and down and f sometimes it's a weeks on ends where the views are low. And if I can see like, oh, I deserve those low views because this video isn't quite good. It's almost like I sometimes I feel like I forgot how to make a great video like the old days. And that maybe is part of what's getting me down. But also, I think maybe it's just the the scope of what I'm trying to achieve. Like I started this whole thing off by asking you, what's your barometer for 
I've said the bro word barometer like four times now, but what's your gauge for how stuck you feel? For me, it's like how much feedback or response am I getting from the directions I want? On the opposite end of that, a great indicator that you're not stuck in life is that you know exactly what you have to do and it's all very needle moving. And then also while you're out there doing all the things you need to be doing, you're like getting people bothering you. <laughs> like, yes. like for some reason, it's like it's in the ether, you know, it's like in the universe, it's in the atmosphere. Like everyone can tell you've got heat on you. This term heat, I actually, did you ever see Entourage? I watched the pilot because my friends were raving about it and I was just like, this sadly is not for me. Yeah, yeah. It's honestly, it's just not a good show at all. Okay. Uh, it's like very bro and, you know, kind of misogynistic, I would mm -hmm. say. But one, I read the book, I was on a plane and Ari Gold, who is a, he's the agent character in that movie. And he has like this fake book. Jeremy Piven plays that character, but this fake book, like the gold standard is what it's called. Mm. And honestly, some of the concepts in that, this fake self-help book are kind of useful. And one of them is this concept of having heat. This is a term in Hollywood that describes when an actor, they've got that something special, that X factor. And by definition, you cannot keep heat on you. Like it's, it's this ephemeral thing that comes and goes. Mm. Sometimes you're hot, sometimes you're not, you know? Yeah. Which is to say it's outside of beauty, it's outside of anything like Robert Pattinson, he's got a lot of heat. That's exactly who I thought of. And if 12 years ago, you were to tell us that men in their late 20s and early 30s and beyond are going to adore Robert Pattinson. In fact, men will love the fuck out of Robert Pattinson more than women. We would have like spit on that guy. We've been like, oh my are God. He, Twilight loser? He's not, he doesn't even make good movies. Yeah. He's not a good actor. Yeah. I will say there was a period where I could feel myself starting to feel confused about Robert Pattinson. Okay, first... Uh, I saw him as Cedric Diggory and I, f I felt nothing. But my f initial thought was they could have hired someone better to play Cedric Diggory. What film was this? Harry Potter number four. Oh, okay. Right, right. 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 That was his first role. Mm. I think he was 17 at the time, but I thought his acting was genuinely not good at the time. Like I, the thing is in reality, he just didn't have a lot to do in that role. So he did it, whatever. He did it fine. Mm. But that was my perception as an 18 year old when I watched that movie. Or actually, no, I was not 18 when Harry Potter four came out. Whenever. Then... I saw the second Twilight movie in theaters because one of my friends wanted to go see it. <laughs> so I saw it and I uh, didn't like it. Of course, I didn't like his performance. Then he was in this movie Cosmopolis and I was like, oh, look at you trying to do indie flicks. David Cronenberg was the director of okay. that. I was like, just give up, bro. You're not an actor. You're not was, this guy. I'm like, first of all, I'm not going to watch this movie. Yeah. Screw this movie. It seems all artsy. I don't care about that. Okay, you're never going to work with Christopher Nolan, one of the greats. You can't sell me on your new identity, pal. Yeah. And then years went by, and he made a bunch of indie movies that I ignored all of them because mm -hmm. I was like, whatever. I, he was not in the... It, the people I was obsessed with at the, t at the time was like Christian Bale in like 310 to Yuma, like actors who really took it all the way. Leo Di DiCaprio consistently throughout his career, I was like so obsessed with. And... Uh, then I saw The Lost City of Z at the age of 20... Three. Mm. And he had a, sm a supporting role in that very small role, very long beard, deliberately hid all of his beautiful features. Like he had these, it was a period piece. So he had like these tiny glasses that like that a doctor might have in Victorian era. Yeah. And I was like, I like this role. You okay. went hard. I was like, oh, very, uh, congrats on a nice understated performance. Mm. It's all right. Not bad. And then that little... That little gear started to turn the other way. I was like, this guy's not that bad. Yeah. And then, uh, well, it was actually Good Time. Did you ever see that movie? I did not. You would adore That's it. That's the Safdie Brothers, right? Safdie yeah. Brothers. I've been recommended that movie a As bunch soon of times. as I saw that, I was like, time and pressure will change anything. And mm. I was like, this was incredible this guy's an amazing actor <laughs> i was like i was like because the actually the dam had already burst a little bit with the lost city of z i was like oh not bad bro mm -hmm. and then good time i was like also like we as men i think we're attracted to competence and people like a great way to, to form a man crush on somebody even like as a man like liking his face <laughs> 
like Casey Neistat That's is oddly exactly sexy. That's exactly I thought. Yeah. Casey Neistat is oddly sexy, even though he looks like a, objectively he looks like a goblin. A gremlin. <laughs> yeah, he does. But it, there's so much com- <laughs> that competence reads so much on his face that you find him handsome. I want to cast Casey Neistat as a goblin in a movie. <laughs> That's my dream. I'm speaking that into existence. <laughs> Yeah. Casey. He would actually make a great green goblin. He would. <laughs> Man. But he's so I find his 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 energy is so attractive, you know? Like I love him. He makes me so happy. You know? Yeah. I would and I'll say good time was the first time I found Robert Pattinson handsome. Oh, okay. Because you could see someone who's like a pretty boy, but you don't as a man you don't find him handsome. Very, very know? true. Very true. And so that was the first time I was like not only his talent makes him so handsome to me. And then what just sealed it in was the lighthouse. Yeah. Robert Eggers, just from a purely performance point of view. I was like, turns out I actually adore Robert Pattinson. Yeah. And now with the Batman, I think men everywhere would hundred percent agree. Yeah. Just bow down. And that's called heat. You know, that, that was my long winded way of getting to this term heat. Sometimes you got heat on you. Sometimes you don't in the YouTube space. You aggressively feel that, you know, like some of these big hitters back in the day whose work I still admire. Nathaniel Drew being a great example. He is not he, Nathaniel Drew doesn't ever go soft. He doesn't he doesn't like he hasn't stopped making videos like super well. Yes. But he doesn't have the same heat he he did 3 years ago. A lot of us it's just impossible to hold on to Peter McKinnon, Sneeko, Sneeko. Hamza currently has some heat. Uh, that's yeah, he, he's on the opposite end. Hamza has a ton of heat right now. But it's going to fade like it fades for everybody else. It does. It always fades and there's seasons to it. So you can always bring it back to it. Mm. You're never down forever. That's what I'm saying. I think Robert Pattinson's a wonderful example of just it being ignored, just like racking up the skill points, doing those shitty indie flicks or, you know, however shit. I never saw any of them, mm-hmm. but like just getting that acting experience. And it's like, as long as you keep hustling, keep hustling, keep hustling, you'll get another shot. Yeah. And yeah, sometimes your periods of life where you don't have heat can last years. Mm hmm. And that's what really messes with your head because when you don't have a result in the immediate moment, you think it's because you suck right now. When in fact you could be great right now, it's just that there's always an echo. Echo? There's always, oh, it's like um, lightning and thunder. The lightning comes first. Yeah. So like you are doing the right things at the delay. lightning, the, 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 there's the delay of the thunder and the delay can sometimes be years. Where I, I kind of think back to, I want to say 18 months ago, the fall of 2019 my channel was growing at three or four thousand subscribers a day and i was like oh my god this is it was almost too much attention to handle and i thought it was because i was doing good things immediate immediately good things and then that kind of rise even though it was a blip in time that rise where my channel would get great views it was around for a whole year around the time when i when i hired you for the first time we started working together that's when I was still, I had a lot of heat. We made the first director series. Yep. It was a whole year of like solid heat. You know, we would make a video like about military principles. We started figuring out, figuring out what this word cinematography even meant. And you know what? My disciplines, I've said this in previous episodes, my disciplines were not on point. And I think viewers could start recognizing it. But my views and the engagement and the love for my channel and my content was so good. I remember one of the most satisfying experiences from... Maybe this was a little over a year ago now. We we shot a sketch in one afternoon with this uh, when you hire an Indian gangster. I think it took us 90 minutes to shoot. I think so. At most. Yeah. Yeah. And it was pretty funny. I thought it was fine. It was pretty funny. Yeah. We both did a great job in our respective roles. I knew you could play that New York City mafia guy. But it was so impromptu. Like we were just like We there. thought of it that hour. We originally <laughs> thought like this guy Pedro was going to play my role. Yeah. But Pedro, either he was unavailable or we just wanted to do it that moment because I yep. think we were going to shoot something else, mm-hmm. but you weren't quite feeling it. Yep. So we were like, fuck it. Let's do this. You be that guy. I'm this guy. And it's like yeah. and 100,000 views, like 20,000 views in a couple hours. I uploaded it at midnight, like still got great views. The channel isn't like that anymore. Like we are not, we don't have that heat heat anymore. But that, that we didn't even. I thought I thought that was what I was doing in the immediate moment. But I, I looking back, I realize the hard work in some capacities of my life was still there. But that heat that I had in that moment was actually because I'd been an, an actor already for twelve years. You had been making comedy sketches for years and years since your college days. Uh, we both are like good at understanding timing, mm-hmm. especially in the sketch format. Mm. And I had spent two years already by that point building up a channel while implementing really hard disciplines like 
driving 45 minutes to a day job to make $20 an hour, which ultimately let me buy the camera that shot that sketch. All these things. I'd been practicing NoFap. You know, I had been meditating and affirming. I'd been doing so many things for so long under the current that even though I wasn't on top of my disciplines 100% in that moment, that snowball kind of pushed me into that moment. Yes, all that accumulated skill. In some ways, my lack of heat right now is finally is like payback for bad habits over the last year and a half. But the thing is, I'm almost not even certain of that. Yeah. Because as we say, like, or as you said, heat is like so fleeting, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm almost like heat is not necessarily like, it it doesn't leave because of some causal relationship. Yeah. my hunch. It could be that, but I feel like we see a ton of guys who retain heat, who live with horrible habits and horrible lifestyles, but they just, you know, they retain the heat for longer and it seems undeserved, you know, and now your habits are back. Do, do you do you really only think it's that? That may be a factor. Well, I think both are true. I think you're completely correct in that it's supposed to be an up and down ebb and flow. And this goes for so many things. We're talking about it in the context of YouTube views and YouTube success, but it also goes for like dating or career. It goes for a lot, but it's supposed to ebb and flow. But if you choose to walk the tight path of like being really dialed in on your habits, which is honestly, it's hard to sustain that level of focus and like monotony in your day to day life for years and years on end. But the people who actually choose to do that, they, their low points are less low. Mm Mm-hmm. Tom Brady is a great example, who has just been an all-star for so many years, so many more years than the typical quarterback. But it's largely because his lifestyle is so incredibly boring. I think he goes to bed by like 8.30 every night and sleeps a lot and, you know, has a very specific way of eating. He like eats only seasonal fruits and vegetables. He hasn't gone for PRs in the gym in forever. He trains with bands a lot and stuff like that so that he just doesn't stress his tendons and stuff and his joints. So it's like you can retain heat better. Your dips are less low when you do walk that tightrope. And I think the fact that I got off that tight, narrow way of living, that very, very disciplined way of living is what my dip ended up being very harsh by Mm -hmm. comparison. Even though, like, you know, it's not, it's not like I was ever a crazy fuck up. Like, I never stopped working on anything. Yes. Day. I never got lazy. Like, sometimes you see very successful YouTubers getting properly lazy, which I've never done. But I guess the real topic that we're trying to get into is, like, what do you do when you don't have heat on you? And how do you get it back? And that's really what I'm chasing to get unstuck in life. And this goes in a lot of directions. Like, when I don't have heat on me... Like even in terms of what to do about making a movie or my aspirations with Hollywood, that feels more stuck. When I don't have heat on me, like I, you know, if I, if I were dating, which I'm not, then that, that department of life becomes harder. Like you you get less success with it. Yeah. How do you internalize being stuck in life, having a lack of heat? And then what do you tell yourself or what do you do to make the most of it? Um, I think, yeah, having a lack of heat, it's something everybody is obviously bound to experience. The thing that people might not ever experience that you, you'll always experience like minor heats in your life, mm-hmm. but like real serious heat, like you had, I think it's a rare phenomenon. Um, so to have that heat and then lose it, you feel the contrast so viscerally, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's just, everything is sort of in service of making you the offering you a challenge you know it's like you got heat once could you do it again uh i was reflecting on this the other day because i sort of was getting very anxious i have reflected previously on the podcast about how i had health problems in the past Mm -hmm. and i was thinking man am i like slipping up lately because i've i've taken on things that i had to quit to become healthy like drinking and you know sometimes i'm not as diligent with my sleep or certain habits as i once was i used to be so dialed in like it was crazy i wouldn't fuck up at all i wouldn't even see people um and now that i'm healthy I, i give myself a little bit more freedom to live but i was thinking to myself you know is my health going to deteriorate again because of how i'm living Mm -hmm. but even if it did i've already gone through that once and i've gathered all these tools right it's like I've gathered all these tools and methods that I had to like get by the teeth the first time around, like trial and error. I had to lose a lot to like get all the information and knowledge that I have now. And I'm like, you went through so much to like 
get heat the first time. You struck gold once and it was through years of trial and error, trial and error, you know, fucking up wrong paths, moving to LA, all this bullshit that like kind of panned out to nothing. Mm -hmm. And then you struck gold and it's like, now that you're back in a place where you like don't have as much heat, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the methods that work, like you're not, you're not, let's say before you were just like kind of shooting blind. It's like, now you at least see the target and Mm -hmm. you're shooting at the target repeatedly. And it's like, whereas before you could have totally just shot in the opposite direction now you just constantly have your eyes on that prize. And I think with enough diligence, it's like the dam has got to give. And you are very now dialed in with your habits. And I think as long as you retain, remain focused for long enough, it's like, who's to say how long it will take? You know, I don't know. Robert Pattinson, clearly it took many years for him to acquire the heat he has currently. Um, but I, I, I think to remind yourself that it's a journey and it will be long but try to enjoy like the videos you make along the way and the just act of creating and then the heat will come of itself it's a fleeting thing you know it can be good because this period of my life where there is a lack of heat now it really makes me question my decisions and my choices and um that's also another thing about fame or youtube success is like I was talking to Matt Diavella about this is like, I would love to retire YouTube um, on my own terms and never feel like I'm a washed up YouTuber. Um, Filthy Frank is like a real inspiration in that regard. He just mm-hmm. tapped out whenever he felt like it. And then he just got an equally, sorry, a way more successful, like yes. a big career yeah, as huge. a musician. Um, so that that's very inspiring to me. Uh, like I would love to not be a YouTuber forever, but like retire having made what I wanted to make and leave like, on top leave on top and then also when i leave to move on to something great as well yeah and it's such a dramatic industry to recognize the heat or lack of heat in your life because it's so magnified the scale is so different the benefits of time going by and when you get heat once and you lose it is like like you said you know so much more like experience lends a hand but also there are things to pay attention to just like getting older I think, to be honest, getting older naturally lends itself to your heat in life reducing if you don't make it a priority. Yes. You know, because like youth, uh, sorry, youth, youth and beauty is what I was trying to say. Youth and beauty um, are huge assets when it comes to heat. Mm. Now with men, we have way more time with that. Like we can maintain it honestly into our 40s, but you have to be on top of your stuff. Yes. Like Jake Gyllenhaal is an example of a guy who's really completely in his stride. It's just gorgeous. As an actor and as a, like a, a man of in his sense of aesthetics, he's completely he's I'm so pumped to see his new movie this week. Actually, it's yeah. like a Michael Bay movie, but I don't care. I'm pumped. <laughs> I mean, I bet it's going to be entertaining as fuck. <laughs> yeah. But like um, I almost equate it to like your virility is like is the same thing. It does diminish with time. So you, unless you have to have practices in place to like keep it high, you know? Yes. But A lot of times when you do have a lack of heat, when like, let's say you don't have a lot of friends, your career has been in the same place for a long time. You're, you're someone who's like dating life is not super successful. You would say, or like your relationship is not super. It's, this also happens with like, uh, you know, marriage, a lot marriage, dating uh, relationships. A lot of people get into this space where they want to be in a committed relationship so bad one of my best friends has been this way. And sometimes I even get into this mindset. Like if I could just get the perfect relationship and like get commitment from them or dial something in hundred percent like marriage, then that would solve all my problems. Right. I wouldn't, I, w- I won't be alone if I get married to the right person. Yeah. But we were talking about this the other day. So many marriages, they get stagnant and it's like, just because you got married doesn't mean you ha- you can never stop paddling. You know, you have to keep swimming hard. You have to keep hitting your stride hard. Yes. Because the thing is, when you stop working on things, they naturally fall apart. Yes, very true. That was my long-winded way of saying, you can't ever take your foot off the pedal for too long because things w- nature's will is that things will fall apart if you stop trying. Yeah, I mean, the, the natural order of things is chaos, yep. right? And it's like man's duty to erect order from that you know 
And I, like you said, I've kind of seen it with like a lot of friends, parents, when they like retire from their jobs, their life just falls into total disarray because you lose something in yourself. Like if, if men don't have the ability to work, like this is what we were like meant to do. That is that organizing force within you and work it just bleeds into everything else. The way you approach your work is the way you approach the world. It's the same thing, you know? There was a great... Did you ever see the Joaquin Phoenix mockumentary? No. Where he was like a rapper? No, I heard of those years. I saw some interviews over yeah, that time. It, it's very funny. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the greatest movie ever, but mm-hmm. there's a moment uh, where in a very famous actor is at his house. Joaquin Phoenix is like acting a total fool. Mm-hmm. Like he's embarrassing himself. He's being this huge asshole in public. Like... Just all for show, obviously. But he's being a huge dick. And all these other actors like think it's real. Mm-hmm. So this famous actor, I'm forgetting who it is. Maybe it's like Patton Oswalt or something. Okay. It's like at his house. And he's just like, Joaquin, like, you know, you climb so high, but like eventually everybody has to fall. Mm-hmm. And I just found that to be like a very potent piece of advice. Of course, Joaquin in the film was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, just <laughs> very dismissive. And it was very funny. Um But it's like, you know, I think a big part of like the heat, Sneeko has a great video about it, about first acquiring that surge of fame Mm -hmm. and everything after it, you're just chasing that initial high. But uh, it's that the higher you climb, like, yeah, everybody has to go back to zero at some point, you know, like death is coming for us all. But even in your career, like you will descend if you ascend. So it's like also keeping that in mind that, you're chasing something that you know is fickle, but it's like, hey, we're here once, you know, let's let's do it for the sake of doing. I maybe this is just the headspace I'm in right now, but if I feel like the p- potential to re- reacquire heat or reinvent myself in a way where there is a lot of heat in my life, if I can't ever climb back to that, I would probably just want to either not live anymore or just retire from chasing the world. And just like meditate and pray just all be the a time. Monk, basically. Yeah, just yeah. just be like, all right, I'm actually done with the world now. Yeah, and I imagine I would do the second thing, not the first. Yes, but I do the first. Fuck me in a monk, guys. <laughs> Kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's that important to me. Yeah, and I like have thought this through because now now I'm 29. In many ways, it feels like my life is just starting. Well, it's weird because some days I feel like my life is over. Yes. Like I have nothing to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. But also it feels like my life is just starting because it's like up until 18, uh, uh, sorry, up until 22, other people have told me what to do. Then from 22 to 26, I was super broke. And then 26 to 27, it was just getting started, but I still had to take a lot of orders from my boss and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then 27 is maybe when like my sense of agency first started kicking in. Mm. And then it took two years of implementing my agency in life to arrive here and like be in a good position. And you can kind of look at that and be like, look at what I did in only two fucking years. And I can make due to this industry and due to life, I can make moves and they can mean a lot. Mm -hmm. Like our app, a lot of people have asked about the transmuted app. It's launched now, Mm -hmm. but it's not everything it's going to be. So, uh, we would encourage you guys to check it out, but also like we're making upgrades to it like every two weeks. And uh, yes. all the, all that takes is just me to like have an idea and then I can give it to my developer. And if he's not capable of something, we are willing to hire externally. And I'm able to make like bigger moves, like CEO style moves Yes, that aren't just me, you know? And I can afford to hire coaches now who are making me better in certain terrains of life that I have no knowledge in. And so my decisions have in some ways more horsepower than ever because I finally got into a place where I don't have to listen to anyone. Mm. And luckily I'm not yet married or especially I don't have kids yet. So I don't have to, I don't have as many obligations as I might be taking on later in life. And so I'm curious cause now yeah. currently you have basically full agency. You're mm-hmm. self-employed. Yep. You run your own business. You've got all this stuff going on. You've got your coaches and everything. So when you feel stuck, it is truly all on you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does that tell you about like yourself, your life? And like, how are you like currently, what, what are your like main practices that help you feel like, cause now you don't drink anymore. So what, where, where do you get that sense of hope back? 
I think I currently don't, you know, mm. like I, I'm very much struggling with this because on paper, I'm doing a lot of things right, but maybe with just getting used to the speed of the internet, I had forgotten how long things take. Even when you're doing all of the right things, it takes time. So currently, you know, every night I reflect on how I could have made this day better. How could I have made this day better? Um, I start each day by thinking of three things I'm grateful for. And then what will I do to make today great? I ask myself those two questions. These are actually questions we're putting into the app, you know, in the journaling section of the app. And then I end each day by reflecting, like, how did I perform compared to my potential? Mm -hmm. And way more often now, I'm able to say, I, I think I genuinely just hit all the things this day. I couldn't have done too much more. Re like, if we're going for a reasonable amount every day, a good amount every day, I've done all that could be done. Yeah. But it's just very, you know, it's very time consuming. Like sometimes I feel like I've been working out super hard and I've been making it a real big priority for maybe approaching eight months now. Why do I still look so ordinary? You know? I feel that in life too. I feel yeah. that some days when, it, you know, we're working on stuff and I'm like, why do every single day we do the same thing or I do the same thing. Yeah. And I'm like, why does it feel like the needle hasn't moved? Yep. And so I find it also very very hard and I, yeah I, I just wonder where like for me sometimes I, I get my hope back where I if I wind the clock back a year and analyze my situation then versus now mm -hmm. I'm like clearly things have changed for the better you know clearly I'm doing much much better um, and I wonder is it just that I'm insatiable you know and is that being a good quality like always hungry never satisfied mm -hmm. or am I ungrateful you know um, or am I truly just unhappy? I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess if I were to do, do that experiment, experiment on myself and wind back the clock one year, around this time last year, we might have just been playing. We've been playing around with some anamorphic lenses. I've been really into anamorphic at this time last year. Yep. We were on the cusp of starting some really exciting videos, including the dark truth about productivity YouTubers, our collab with Thomas Frank. And also, uh, I lived like Christopher Nolan for a week, which was one of my favorite videos in 2021. And I was really excited about all that stuff. But my performance on a day-to-day -day basis wasn't incredible. So my self-satisfaction was not super high. I also had a boss and I felt very impeded by my job. So I don't have that now. Way fitter now than I was last year. Yes. So a lot... I can definitively say else wake may make way more money now than I did last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can definitively say like a lot is good, but I think what it ultimately tells us, it's not that there's anything wrong with us or that we're insatiable or anything, but oftentimes um, when you feel stuck, it just is either a matter of patience or more courage. Yeah. You either need to be more courageous and do more crazy shit or you need to, you'd be like, I am on point. I need to be more patient. Mm -hmm. It's one of those two. So what do you think it is for you? Is it patience or courage? Or do you even agree with me? No, I actually totally agree with you. I think that's my main way of like uh, reminding myself that I'm doing fine is taking the long view. Yeah. You know? Um, so I think a lot of it is patience. But I think, I think the spring and the summer are the seasons for doing crazy shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those are like, you know, when you, when you reap the new flowers, plant the seed, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I think right now I'm feeling like I need, I'm trying to do new things. I'm trying to put my chips into like a couple new baskets, see what happens. Yeah. Another, you know, thing to discuss here is that if you are someone who feels stuck in life often, that's probably going to mean that in the long haul, you're going to be better off because a lot of people don't feel stuck like they, you, they don't feel that sense sense of being stuck. It's not painful. If they do, it's not painful enough for them. I think they, they either ignore it or find a way to numb it. You know, it's really convenient to be able to numb things. Like I wish, man, I got to tell you, man, this last week I've been craving a drink really badly. Yeah. And like I've said many times when I drink, I never drink to excess. You know, I actually never have really, but I've been craving it so badly because of feeling stuck and I know it would solve that problem of feeling stuck for the evening. Yeah. That day would be taken care of. And then the next day it would come back, but then I could deal with it the next day, you know? Yep. So like future Nikhil would have to deal with it, but current Nikhil wouldn't. Yeah. 
And sometimes, man, that feeling has gotten so painful of feeling stuck. Like I truly feel sorrow in my body about like feeling stuck. And it's weird because I'm like, fuck, I don't know what to do about this. So I would schedule impromptu boxing sessions with my two coaches because I'm like, I know if I would go box right now, it'll go away because boxing is so exhausting. Yeah. It's exhausting in a way that even deadlifting 400 pounds is not because it's just like constant movement. It's all these different types of stress. Mentally exhausting, physically exhausting. You have to like remember the combination. They make you do like jumping jacks and body weight exercises in between the combination of speed and strength. And then also there, you know, we talk about being stuck. There's something about throwing 50 punches in a couple minutes time where you're like, the, that um, metaphor of using your body to do things and just that metaphor of striking something, attacking something, is a mental shift. It's an immediate mental shift. It tells your body, if you want to change things, get it. Get get the thing. Yeah. Don't don't be a pussy about it. Go get the thing. You know, it's like that aggressively, that fast. Yes. Or even one of my coaches, if I don't guard myself, he will just punch me in the face. Like not super hard, but he'll just let me have it and I'll be like... I'll get knocked back for a second. Yep. And I'm like, oh shit. Like if you don't get, if you don't keep your hands up, life will come at you. Yes. So I've been using boxing as one, as a way to get myself to not drink. Cause I, I've been craving a drink. I think as a way of like solving my mental health issues, mm-hmm. damage men podcast. What's up? Damage men podcast. <laughs> I forgot. We got to really own this. I haven't like gotten really upset yet. I got to channel some pain. <laughs> Yeah, so numbing it is like such a It's honestly a hack And that's why a lot of people can be okay with it But if you live with that pain You will transform your life So sometimes it's acknowledging like If you can just accept that you're in pain And just be like, yeah, I'm in pain And you know what? It might be another six months before I stop being in pain And by pain, I mean just like that sorrow about being stuck. You yeah. Know? See, the thing is, I actually like basically journaled about this today, but I was like, I'm in like, my brain is like in crisis mode right now. Yeah. I'm like, I'm in a crisis. But uh, I was like, crisis mode is good because crisis mode is what motivates me to actually make changes. Like if I feel like things are fucking awesome, I'm like, well, let's just keep doing the same bullshit. You know, Elliot Hulse put it like a long time ago in a way that I really love. When you want to get a thing, right, either you are running away from something, which is pain towards that thing, or you are chasing a desire. So it's either you're running from something or you're chasing after something. Mm. And like those are like the two forms of motivation that exist. And like crisis mode is really easy because you don't have to channel any desire. You're just like fucking I just see the monster back there. Yeah. You know, no, I'm just straight up running from the monster. Yeah. Very often. Yeah. Yeah. That's maybe I need to journal about this to figure this, solve this for myself. But I feel like I am also in crisis mode right now. Uh, sometimes the weirdest things mess me up. You know, like sometimes I'm like, is the, should the podcast, should it go on the main channel or should it be a second channel? Like I'll ask myself these questions. Like sometimes I genuinely question, should I be investing my time into something else? So like, should I be going back and getting the next sales for a certification? Mm. I definitively know that the answer is no. Yeah. I know that there's something here, but like, Maybe it's, maybe it's, it's been around for a month now where I'm like, ah, am I doing something wrong? You're like, am I doing something wrong? If not, like I, I so desperately want to solve this pro- problem. To, to be honest, dude, I think I'm addicted to heat. The, this concept of having heat. I get it. And I work, I think I work super hard in life to get it and maintain it. And I, I kind of like a steady amount of heat going all the time. When, when those, that fall of 2019, when it was a ton is like, I don't think my brain can handle that much. So like, I like having a consistent amount all the time. And, um, it's so important to me. Like I, like I said earlier on in the episode, I'm like, if I get to like, one of the reasons I fear aging and I work, I want to work so hard to like stay young all, all my life Yep, is because of this addiction to heat, you know, but I, I don't even know if it's an addiction. It's just like, I think we can both agree that amongst the more, more miserable, moments in our life in our day is when we're scrolling Instagram. Correct. And the reason why I've thought about this, it's so miserable is because people are projecting their own heat onto you. Like everyone's showing you all the cool shit they're up to, especially if you're like just swiping through stories, which is like probably like 80% of the reason I'm on Instagram is just like looking at stories more than posts. Yep. Cause I find posts very annoying now. Mm-hmm. 
um, especially because everything is so much video content. <laughs> so I like, we'll look at people's stories. And when you look at stories, everyone's always up to something. That's the reason they're putting up a story. Although if we really break it down, like why do they need to put up a story? Why can't they just live out that moment is because people themselves are trying to show off their heat. Yeah. Show off their heat, convince themselves that they do in fact have it because genuine heat is actually pretty tough. You can't just go to a concert and be like, I have heat. Yeah. Which is what a lot of people try to do. They try to um, hijack someone else's heat into their own life. And it doesn't work that way. Yeah. You can't go to a concert or a movie and be like, Oh my God, I have heat. You know, it's like, no, that's their heat. And you're just fucking at a concert. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I never understood the concert thing. I'm, I'm very yeah. like against filming at a concert personally. I yeah. don't care what other people do. They can do whatever the fuck they want, but I'm like, I'm here. I want to like not see this guy through the screen on my phone. I have eyes. I want to see him through my eyes. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, I will say I'm, I'm guilty of this in my own aspects, but every time I feel something is another reason why I don't really like couple posts or like, look at how happy we are in our relationship type posts. Mm. I understand like <laughs> they're valuable to people to put up. Like there's a, there are certain things that are accomplished by putting those things up. Yeah. But that's not a demonstration of heat to me because I'm like, isn't that just your, if you really were happy with your personal life, wouldn't you just fuck off and be happy? Like, you're, are you trying to convince, are you trying to show me how happy you are in your relationship? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and not for the people who just like capture a moment. There is also a level where it's like it genuine totally good. Yeah, yeah. Genuine expression, but you can sense it in the people who do it out of a uh, desperation. Yes. I particularly have noticed it with some friends from high school who get like girls, they get engaged and they get married. And then like the next seven months slash two years of their life are just their wedding photo. And they'll put up Instagram posts that are so random, but it's about their wedding. They'll be like five months being married to the most perfect man in the world. And it's like a wedding photo. I'm like five months is such a weird marker to be putting this up. Yes. Like, why'd you put this up? You do you just have, you just have nothing going on today. Yeah. So you're trying to like, you're trying to generate heat from your past almost. I'm almost, yeah. And I think everybody's just has this addiction to that small little dopamine hit, right? It's like, that's all everybody really wants. It's like Instagram is a thing built to addict you because it's like, Hey, you put this up, you'll get your little dopamine for the day and then you fuck off. Right. Would, would you ever try getting dopamine from nostalgia from your past? I feel like you would not do that. Every time you put up something, it's because it's happened recently or immediately. It's the next video you put up, yep. the last shoot you had, the trip you took like very recently, like yes. now it's today's stuff. But I think that's all, like a, I think that's like a, a level of discipline that I maintain. Yeah. It's like, uh, I've had temptations to like post stories of whatever the fuck. And I'm like, this is not important enough. Yeah. Like the posts have got to be like, I'm making moves. You know, I want to portray myself in a particular way mm -hmm. as like legitimately making moves, but I get it. Like in the in-between, I'm sure you experience this as well. Where like, say you don't put a video out for a little while. You're like, fuck, am I doing nothing? When all the while you've been working on this goddamn video, but you, there's that immediacy. It's right there and it's a click away. So I understand this like massive temptation to do that. And I think our lives lend to us doing like visually optically cool shit. Yes. more often than most people sure. so it's like fuck they you know wh what are they doing besides their wedding they're like working a corporate job they're not really going to post that while we are lucky enough to be like oh look i'm fucking i'm under a waterfall like you know i'm inclined to say though i don't care then post nothing then post nothing fair like there are people i know who work a corporate job who also every time they put up a story it's pretty awesome mm. like straight up okay um, he never, he will never watch this, but I will say this friend from high school. Who's like also Indian American. I think just two years older than me. Arkajit is his name. He travels all the time and he's just always doing cool shit. And he, he's a consultant. I'm pretty sure. Um, but every time I get a story from him, it's such a fucking awesome story. Like it honestly puts me to shame. He'll even put up the story. Like <laughs> he, like I'm pretty sure he was making a ton of money at his, uh, at one of his consulting jobs. Mm -hmm. And he just like put up this random, po like he had sent an email to his boss, like he's quitting and he just like did this and he put it up and he like, it was just the e resignation email. And he's just, he's like, that I'm out this savage. bitch. <laughs> he's like, I, and it was, I, I think he like retired 
from a very lucrative job. Fuck yeah. I don't know what, I actually don't know what he's doing now, but I'm pretty sure it's equally cool. Same thing with another guy from college, James Morrissey. Like, so always, uh, I mean, I guess he doesn't post as often, but every time he'd post, it's like, it'd be awesome. He, like, started a startup that started working, that, like, was making money. Like, it would always be dope shit, you know? And uh, I, that's something I aspire to. It also tells me, like, momentum in your life and feeling stuck in your life, it's it's all your responsibility. And oftentimes we feel bad because we were actually taking responsibility. And I think that also lends to like this idea of like, you know, this guy posts stories infrequently, but when he does, they're bangers. Yep. It's like, so that means between stories, there's a lot of work going on in the quiet that nobody sees. Mm -hmm. And when you're working in the quiet, as I said, there's just like, demotivating sensation because you're not getting the dopamine from the feedback from the people you're not getting positive feedback and you just got to be like the time will come you know like Robert Pattinson making those shitty indie movies like the time will come where I get to shine again you know patience I think maybe now that you said this maybe I'm in that period of my life where there's just there's no dopamine uh, it's like the quiet in between. It's fucking weird because I post videos to YouTube every week, and everyone's every time I put up an Instagram story, people are like, "King." But <laughs> so it's not the same. It's not. Yeah. This, it's not at the level it once was. No, no, it's not the same, and it's just, it's like my life, you know, like my relationships, my, yeah, my career. That's that larger picture thing, and uh, it's like I'm so much in that in between, and I'm working really hard these days, and I think it's just like maybe I've just been such a dopamine addict and I have like sincerely cut out so many dopamine sources now that my brain is just pushing back. It's like, my brain is very unhappy because it's like, there's nothing now, you know, there's, <laughs> there's nowhere I go to. I, I have no happiness. I just have anymore. to live with myself yeah. and my choices. And I have to, I, have, there's nothing distracting me from my own standards in life. Mm -hmm. It's such a painful place to be. I'm doing, doing more than ever, you know? Yeah. And it's such a, it's like, I think when you're in that close proximity to yourself where you have like zero numbing agents, you just have to like figure out how to treat yourself and how to like be okay with yourself in the room because mm. your brain is such a constant companion now. And like, it's not being flooded with dopamine to like numb it to death that, yeah, if you don't like yourself, like that is going to be like made loud and clear to you, you know, in any given moment. Mm -hmm. So I think you're just experiencing like more lucidity than you've ever experienced, especially because previously in your life, you didn't feel like you had control and now your mind knows that you had control. So before maybe like if you weren't living up to your potential, you could be like, well, I'm not in control of my life. Other people are. They're telling me what to do. That's why. Right. But now you, you literally have no excuses anymore. Everything is on you and you have cut out the numbing agents in your life to hide from them. Yeah, I guess before, like a great example of this is when I still worked, um, not even my last corporate job, but my first corporate job, mm. which I worked for a whole year. And there was something very peaceful about it, even though what it was is I would be living at home with my parents. So I would drive 45 minutes to go to Thomson Reuters, this big corporate agency. And I would work there for seven hours. I would always dip out an hour early because I just needed a little bit of time to myself. And then in the evenings, I often would do theater. Like I was in a play, I was in two plays that summer. So that would, it was artistically very f fulfilling, but it was also a huge time suck. It's also connected to a brewery, but there was some inherent excitement built around there, but I knew it was like, that also wasn't true progress. Like in Minnesota, you do a play, you work for three months and you get $700, you know, it's like, yeah. not, it's not like money. I was also like working on this, movie like a lo local indie movie in which I was the lead but it wasn't a great project it was just someone's passion project but we didn't have a budget or anything I was being paid nothing for it I was trying to build a demo reel but it was keeping me very busy that would make me busy on the weekends I was also studying Salesforce in my three hours a time at the weekend and then I was committing myself mentally to uploading one YouTube video a week mm -hmm. so there was so much time sucked away and that was kind of freeing because you you look at your day and be like, well, I couldn't have done anything more because I live at home with my parents. So they own those hours a little, like I can't do too much. Right. And then I drive to a corporate job. I am working the job. I have no choice but to make this money. 
artistic for artistic fulfillment i sort of knew maybe the play was a little bit of a waste of time but i was also becoming a better actor yeah i was working on a short film to get myself more ta- like a demo reel so that that made sense and then i was studying i was like a lot of my time was set for me so i didn't have i had fewer hours in the week where i had to hold myself to any standard because i had less time and i think you know you've said to me that you were like very happy in those days right yeah and I think a lot of it is like, you know, maybe those hours at Thompson Reuters weren't like the most efficient and same goes for the play. But I feel like everything did and was like moving the needle mm-hmm. in some capacity. Like it never felt like useless time, you know? Yep. And um, so I think just a way to feel unstuck is to kind of break it down to on your day to day and just make sure none of your time is like everything just has to be usefully spent. Everything has to be like efficiently spent time so that you can be like, all right, you know, I feel stuck, but like, whatever, let's move the needle on the day to day. Like, even if I don't feel it, like it's, it's a day to day process that moved the needle before. Let's do the same things. Thomas and I, we just created a course together called a hundred days of momentum. It's going to be like not just a course, but like there's probably going to be groups that be they're like a set amount of people that we take in and there's like uh, a community and weekly accountability. Mm-hmm. But l- uh, largely this course, a hundred days of momentum uh, was driven by what we'd been feeling. Cause we were, we'd been like, re- well, I want to revolt so aggressively against this feeling that um, I, I created a system for myself to break out of it like violently yes we arrived at this conclusion in the podcast that if you're feeling stuck you either need more patience or more courage i think more than courage i need more patience right now but i also need a little bit more courage i think i'm lacking in both Mm -hmm. lacking in both departments but i think we're getting to the end of the podcast i think we should actually just give away the main ideas from that course um it won't be ready by the time this podcast is released, but just to keep it on people's horizons, anyone who was interested in joining a hundred days of momentum and having accountability with us, you can sign up for my newsletter, which is in the description box below. And then when that course is released, when that cohort is open, you guys will be the first to hear about it. You'll be the first to hear about it, but let's give away the ideas that that system that we created together in like the next 10 minutes here before we close out, just kind of preview This podcast episode isn't me and Thomas telling you, here's what the fuck to do. It's us saying like, fuck, what should we do? Yeah, it's us being like, (laughs) we are talking through these topics every single time. Yeah. And it's us being like, fuck, I need to do this. Totally. Because I'm fucked. That's genuinely how I feel, man. Like, I feel like, fuck, I can't feel like this anymore. Dude, I I feel the same. Yeah. I'm like, I can't get a gun because I'd use it to kill myself. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I really hope Artlist is okay with all this. Guys, sign up for Artlist. Sign up for Artlist <laughs> just so the podcast can keep running, guys. This is the, we're depending on you. Come on. Anyhow. You know how I said I'm doing that Tuesday night shoot? Oh yeah. I think I'm just gonna make that shoot like for a new intro for the Damage Wood podcast. Oh hell yeah. Let's do it. Love uh, it. So um, you wanna yeah, start us off? Let's start us off. Okay. So hundred days of momentum, right? We're trying to not feel stuck in life anymore. So the first idea that we came up with is creating an ideal for yourself, right? So this is an idea and tell me your thoughts on this, but it's like some people have gone back and forth on whether it's useful to create an ideal for yourself, because if you don't live up to your ideal, you feel so miserable. And I think that is true. You feel more miserable when you know how you want to be and you're not that way. You're like, oh, fuck, I see this thing and I'm not this thing, you know, but I also think when you viscerally remember what your ideal is, and you remind yourself of it and you sort of do it through journaling. I do through a a commonplace book on notion Mm -hmm. or sorry, OneNote. You just know what to aim for. And those rare days where you live up to your ideal, where you literally say, I was the best I could possibly be today. When you know that and you do that, it's not happiness, but it's like peace. It's like like this knowing like, fuck man, I don't think I could have done anything more today. 
Yes, and I think um, one thing that we touched on, which is important to me, yeah. is that say you don't live up to your ideal on any given day. You know, Benjamin Franklin was famous for like having that list of habits that he wanted to live up to, and he'd rate himself one out of five every single day mm. on all of these virtues that mm -hmm. he wrote out. And very often he would not live up to all of them. In fact, like every day, he never lived up to every single one he laid out. Mm -hmm. And I think just, ha but having that ideal in mind, it, it shows you what you should be striving for. I don't think we're going to live perfectly any day of our lives, you know? Yeah. And I think we touched on something important, which was that, you know, when you meditate, when you break meditation uh, and you think, oh God, I should have been focusing on my breath. Oh, I'm punishing myself for it. Mm -hmm. While you're punishing yourself, you're still not back to meditating yet. Yeah. And it would be a much faster, you'd get more time meditating if you just jumped right back in without any sort of self uh, loathing, like, you know, any flagellation about it. So I think resist the temptation to like fall into punishing yourself just because it's, it's in service of nothing. Yeah. It's almost like that up concept we put a little later on, but we can address it now. So like, it's almost as if like you create the ideal, you vow to live up to that ideal of yourself the best you can. You're going to fall short. So you're completely, di completely dispassionate about falling short. Mm -hmm. And my boxing coach has this mantra that he taught me, pick up and go. Always just pick up and go. Almost as if, like, you know, like the movie Memento is about a guy who constantly has amnesia and just finds himself in situations. That's actually all of us, even though we probably don't have short-term am amnesia. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to this. But like, you always find yourself in this moment in life. Like you found, <laughs> here we are. Somehow we're sitting shooting this, right? Yep. So never judge yourself for falling short from your, for the ideal. But as soon as you gain awareness again, go back to chasing the ideal. Yeah. And like, if you constantly chase the ideal, well, it's a great place to start because most people don't even consider that they can be the best they can be. It's almost like Elon Musk had once said in an interview, I think people can choose to be great. And like knowing what your ideal is and remembering like, I'm going for it now, right? I exist now and Nikhil is here. I'm going to go for the best version of me now. It's kind of like, oh, okay, now I know what I have to do. Yes. It's a great place to start out. The next section of the course, we talk about NoFap and all of the benefits of it, physical and mental. We won't rehash that because we have a whole podcast episode about it, but maybe like a quick 20 second spitball of the benefits that we feel on it. Because it is sexual transmutation is a big part of the course. And for me, it's like physical skin looks better. Personally, I need less sleep just feeling more aggressive in the completion of actions. I feel like my body language is better. I feel like there is more attraction from women, but also people in general. Mentally, I feel sharper. I feel like I'm able to speak better. I'm more cogent. My meditations are better. I'm able to visualize better. And as a result, the law of attraction works better because visualization and truly feeling certain emotions, um, being in a state of desire, but like empowered, angry desire makes the law of attraction work better. Um, I get more creativity and insights. We've talked in the course, we talk about how shooting a, a sketch or something like that, making a comedy video, any kind of cinematic edit, it requires a certain degree of creativity. Mm -hmm. And if you've, if you've busted the day before, it's almost like that creativity isn't there. That source isn't there to pull from. Yeah. I know I'm talking super fast, but no, we want to just fine. get through this. Yeah. And then, yeah, we also just talk about how it's really like, uh, the fundamental magnetic field by by which everything else becomes easier. It allows you to be a more high vibration person in general, which makes the other tactics work better. And in service of that, the next part of the course talks about habits that we strongly believe in. Those are cold showers, compound lifting, exercise, meditation, mind storming. Mind storming is a great way of feeling unstuck in life, which yes. is just to ask yourself a question and answer that question in as many responses as you can without judging them. I think a good thing about mind storming is it just, for me at least, restores quite a bit of hope, especially when I'm feeling stuck. That's when I like will resort to the mind storm because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I have so many fucking things to try to make this unstuck. Yeah, a big part of feeling stuck in life is feeling like you can do nothing about it. Yeah. But even if your position doesn't change, gaining that awareness that I can actually, if I feel stuck, I can do 20 things today. Yeah. To just try to get me out of the mud just yeah. a little bit. Just knowing that you can do new things is encouraging. And then the next part of that is like, especially when you do something like NoFap, you feel like doing all of those things. Mm -hmm. There's there's obviously there's knowing you can do something. Like I know I could make a better YouTube video and then I'd get better views. 
but then also feeling like I'm going to do it, you know, yeah, yeah. that is a new thing. And that's why I believe so strongly in sexual transmutation. Uh, we also talk about, oh, three hours of deep work a day. Yep. We spend some time talking about that. We also talk about inspired leisure as one of the last important habits to implement in your Just life. Just recovery being a very, very important aspect of long-term success. Yeah. Recovery, inspired leisure is a form of recovery. This means like going to things like concerts, you know, going, yeah. g- watching a movie that you love. Uh, recently, I watched Miami Vice, the movie. It turns out it's actually one of my favorite movies. Mm. Yeah, recently Michael I rewatched this movie Paprika, and I think also one of my favorite movies. It's and so when you, you would you when you watch inspired cinema like that, especially for both of us who are cinematographers, it like helps you pick up pick up the camera the next day. Yes, and I think there's just something to watching art that inspires you that makes you feel alive. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think feeling unstuck, you just feel almost like dead inside, yeah. or feeling stuck rather. Yeah. Yeah. So there's. There's a ton you can do to remind yourself that it's possible to be unstuck. Um, and these, a lot of these ideas that we just talked about really quickly in the last eight minutes, they're all going to be in the course and the cohort. So once again, you can check out the newsletter. And when that's live, when we are taking applicants, we'll let you know when that is. But in this podcast episode, there's no definitive ending. Like we're not going to put a button on it. We're not going to put a tie a ribbon around it. It, you know, sometimes you do just feel stuck in life. Yeah. And in those moments, you have to sit back and really analyze. Like, do I feel stuck? Oh, well, do I feel stuck because I'm just too fucking old now and my time's done? Yeah. <laughs> Probably not that. Yeah. <laughs> do I feel Do I feel stuck? Which, in that note, there's a ton of careers that are inspired as hell in their 60s and 70s. So. Yeah, I mean, there's just... If you're feeling stuck at any age, I would yeah. say, it's like there's a way to... Do it. It's like, probably more that there's something that you could be doing, not necessarily that you're genuinely stuck. Like and it's I don't over. even think it's being stuck is like necessarily means you're doing something wrong. Yeah. It's just like a signal like things should change. Something needs to change. Whether it's, well, it's your mindset or your actions. It's either patience or courage, or maybe you just need to start doing more. Yeah. And so Man, I mean, this is kind of like one of those to-be-continued type endings on a podcast. Like, I mean, let's we're see. both still in crisis mode. We're, we're both still mode. damaged men. <laughs> it's never going to change. But now I am practicing 100 days of momentum myself. Mm-hmm. And um, my 100 days will end July 8th. Yeah. So let's see if something something changes by then. Let's see. This is now the Damaged Men podcast. We're here every Sunday for you folks. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Anywhere you can find podcasts. That's it for today. Greatness is coming. We'll catch you guys next time.